Okay, so July 20th, 1969. Big day. Yeah. I mean, close your eyes just for a second. Mm. And uh, imagine, you know, that kind of faint hiss of static. Right. Like a really fragile signal, like stretching across hundreds of thousands of miles. Wow. And you hear this, you know, stark mechanical voice counting down. Oh, yeah. And, you know, millions around the world are holding their breath at this moment. Oh, it's electric. And then finally this, you know, it's a little crackly, but it's undeniably a human voice. Yeah. Uttering words that, I mean, instantly became legend. That's one small step for a man. One giant leap for mankind. I get chills every time I hear it. Right. I mean, we all know the quote, but uh, what's the real story behind that first footprint on the moon? Yeah, what's the story behind the story? Exactly. So... Welcome to the Deep Dive. Always a pleasure to be here. So you, our fellow explorer out there listening, you sent in a fascinating collection of info to rdfpc.net. Oh, this is great stuff. Yeah. And today we're piecing together the incredible narrative of the man on the moon. I love it. So where do we even begin? Well, I think what's so amazing when you look at this event is like how many different stories kind of intertwine right. to create this one you know, monumental achievement. Yeah. I mean, it's a tale of intense rivalry, uh, almost unbelievable ambition. Yeah. And these just moments of sheer human ingenuity and courage. Wow. You know, yeah. think of it like this high stakes drama, you know, playing out on the world stage with space as the backdrop. I love that. Right. And mm -hmm. at its heart, you've got the space race of the 1960s, which was just this, you know, key chapter in the Cold War story. Exactly. And the 60s, I mean, talk about a time of tension. Oh, yeah. Deep-seated tension between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. Right. And this wasn't just, you know, political maneuvering. This was like a contest for global influence. Absolutely. Like a demonstration of, mm -hmm. you know, which system had the technological and the ideological edge. Right, right. So then in 1961, oh yeah, the Soviet Union, they sent Yuri Gagarin into orbit. Huge moment. He becomes the first human in space. First one ever. <laughs> it was a clear signal yeah. that the U.S. was at least in this, you know, arena they were behind. At least for the moment, yeah. Right, so that initial Soviet success that really sets the stage for a comeback story. For sure. It, did, it created this, like, you know, powerful sense of urgency. Yeah. This national imperative for the U.S. to not just catch up. Right. But to actually surpass their rival in this, you know, this new frontier of space. OK, oh. so how do you transform that competitive spirit? Yeah. Into something as audacious as landing someone on the moon within a decade? Well, that's a great question. It's a huge question, right? It is. So this is where President John F. Kennedy. Oh, yeah. He steps onto the stage, you know, in our story. Right. And in a speech that, I mean now echoes through history, he didn't just, you know, propose a goal. Yeah. He issued a challenge. Right. And the challenge was to land a man on the moon well, and return him safely to Earth before the end of the 1960s. I mean, just consider the sheer audacity of that sure. I'm going to talk about putting it out there. Right Absolutely. Now. But his words, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Yeah. That wasn't just rhetoric. No, it wasn't. It was a catalyst that ignited a national endeavor. Totally. It was like a call to arms, but for, you know, scientists and engineers instead of soldiers. And I love that. All right. So we've got this huge undertaking, right, yeah. to meet this challenge. Oh, yeah. It demanded just this massive mobilization of, you know, intellect and resources. Totally. Pushing the boundaries of existing science and technology in so many fields. In countless fields. Yeah. And this is where... The narrative of NASA's Apollo program, oh, yeah. it takes center stage. It really does. It was this sprawling, intricate organization built with this singular, almost unbelievable objective. It's hard to fathom. And the unspoken but very real pressure. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, failure in such a public and high-stakes endeavor, Right. it just wasn't an option. It wasn't even on the table. Okay, so we've got this gripping narrative of a superpower rivalry fueling this you know, almost impossible objective. Yes. So let's zoom in okay. on the individuals who became the central characters in this epic story. Let's do it. The crew of Apollo 11. All right. So July 16th, 1969. There we go. The ground trembled as the Saturn V rocket roared to life. Not a machine. Carrying Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins skyward. Just picture that for a second. I know, it's hard to imagine the sheer force. It's mind-blowing involved in launching that colossal machine. It really is. So what's so compelling to me here is this blend of meticulous preparation. Oh, for sure. And extraordinary trust placed in these three men. Absolutely. Neil Armstrong, the commander, 
He was known for his just almost preternatural calm under pressure. He was the right man for the job. Absolutely a vital trait for what was to come. Yeah, no kidding. Buzz Aldrin, the lunar module pilot. Right. He brought his sharp engineering mind to the complexities of the Eagle Lander. Right, the Eagle. And then Michael Collins, often the unsung hero. He remained in orbit aboard Columbia. Right. A critical lifeline back to Earth. Essential role. His role was solitary, but absolutely essential. I didn't have done it without him. So picture the scene, right? Right. Millions of eyes are fixed on that pillar of fire. Yeah. Ascending into the heavens. It's beautiful and terrifying all at the same time. It wasn't just a rocket launch. Yeah. It was humanity collectively holding its breath. It's true. So for the next four days, these three individuals, they were hurtling through the silent void of space. I mean, can you imagine? It's easy to gloss over the sheer duration and the profound isolation of that journey. It's easy to forget that part. They were confined to this small capsule. Right. They're managing these complex systems. Constantly working. Constantly preparing for the immense challenges ahead. Like the lunar landing. Exactly. Which was no walk in the park. Right. And this part of the story, I mean, it underscores the remarkable resilience. Yes. And unwavering focus of these astronauts. Imagine being in that confined environment. Yeah. Millions of miles from home. Millions. You're acutely aware of the inherent risks. Right. Yet you're maintaining this precision and clarity yeah. needed to execute this mission. I mean, it speaks volumes about our capacity for exploration. Totally. And our willingness to you know, venture into the unknown, even when faced with considerable danger. So then we arrive at July 20th, 1969. The big day. I mean, the tension must have been palpable. Oh, yeah. As the lunar module, the Eagle. The Eagle has landed. Right. Really? Separated from the command module. Right. Armstrong and Aldrin were on their own. They were. Beginning their descent to the moon's surface. Huge moment. But then this moment of heart-stopping trauma. Oh, yeah. Alarms start to sound in the cramped cockpit. Uh-oh. The onboard computer, the, the tool designed to guide them, right. it was overloaded. No. Flashing warning lights. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the surge of adrenaline? Yeah. The sudden, you know, spike in uncertainty. Right. Their primary guidance system is faltering. And they're hurtling towards the moon. While hurtling towards an alien world. That's intense. This is a pivotal point in the narrative, right? Absolutely. It highlights this, you know, critical interplay between technology and human intervention. For sure. What's remarkable is Armstrong's response yeah. with just incredible composure and skill. Right. Honed through years of rigorous training, he took manual control of the Eagle. Wow. Reports suggest they had critically low fuel reserves. How low are we talking? Perhaps only 30 seconds worth. Oh my gosh. Think about the immense pressure. I can't even imagine. Of having to manually pilot this fragile spacecraft to a safe landing with such little margin for error. It's unbelievable. This wasn't just about following a program. This is about instinct experience and sheer nerve. He was the right guy for the job. So then the words that echoed across the globe. Here we go. The simple statements that belied the monumental achievement. Yeah. Houston Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. I imagine the explosion of relief and elation at Mission Control. Oh, I bet. Years of dedication, immense financial investment, the hopes of an entire nation hanging in the balance. All writing on this. All culminating in that single understated announcement. Wow. But as significant as the landing was, right. the moment the world was truly waiting for was still to come. I can't wait. The first human step on another celestial body. It's hard to overstate the importance of that moment. So the landing itself was a triumph of engineering and piloting. It really was. But it was that first physical connection with the lunar surface. Right. That truly captured the collective imagination. Oh, yeah. And what's interesting is there was a significant wait, almost six hours. Really? Before Armstrong finally opened the Eagle's hatch. Wow. Picture the anticipation building during those hours. Oh, yeah. Not just for the millions watching on Earth, yeah. but for Armstrong and Aldrin inside that small spacecraft. I can't even imagine. Preparing for their historic EVA, yeah. their extravehicular activity. Okay, so six hours go by. And when he finally emerges, right. yeah. the grainy black and white images beamed back to Earth. Right. They became instantly iconic. I mean, who doesn't recognize those images? Each slow, deliberate step down the ladder. Yeah was a step into history. You know, literally. And then his boot touched the lunar dust, or redolith, as it's called. Redolith. That single footprint in the gray surface became a timeless symbol of human endeavor. And then he says it. And then he spoke those unforgettable words. Let's hear it. That's one small step for a man, 
one giant leap for mankind. So good. There's a profound power in that statement. Totally. A recognition of both the individual achievement right. and the collective leap for humanity. That's perfect. What's so evocative is how that simple phrase managed to encapsulate both the personal act and the universal significance of the moment. Yeah, and then Aldrin joins him, right? offering his own you know, powerful description of the moon as magnificent desolation. Magnificent desolation. Mm -hmm. It's this contrasting but equally compelling image of this alien landscape. Right. And despite the starkness, their presence marked an undeniable expansion of humanity's reach. Absolutely. So, of course, they weren't just, you know, taking in the view. Right. They had a series of crucial tasks. Like what? Deploying scientific instruments. Okay. Collecting lunar samples. Okay. Which are those precious moon rocks that continue to inform our understanding of the solar system right. and symbolically planting the American flag. Of course. But perhaps the most enduring symbol of their visit is the plaque they left behind. Tell me about it. Bearing the inscription. Here, men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon. We came in peace for all mankind. Wow. That message of peace and the acknowledgement of representing all of humanity. Powerful. It underscores the profound significance they attributed to their mission. Totally. So in total, they spent roughly 21 hours exploring this alien world yeah. before, you know, commencing their journey back to Michael Collins orbiting above. 21 hours. And that 21 hour stay was a whirlwind of carefully planned activities. Right. A testament to the meticulous preparation that went into every aspect of the right. mission. Absolutely. And while the return journey may have seemed less dramatic to the public, yeah. the rendezvous with the command module Columbia right. and the subsequent re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, yeah. those were incredibly complex and critical maneuvers. No kidding. Demanding the same level of precision and expertise. I mean, it's easy to overlook that part of the story. So finally, on July 24th, 1969. The return. Apollo 11 splashed down safely in the Pacific Ocean. What a moment. The crew returned to a world forever changed by their achievement. Oh, yeah. They were celebrated as heroes. Rightfully so. But their journey represented something far greater. What's that? Humanity's seemingly boundless capacity for innovation. Yes. And our collective ability to achieve the extraordinary when driven by a shared vision. It's inspired. You know, it's sobering to consider that since that monumental event, only 12 individuals have walked on the moon. That's wild. That stark fact highlights just how challenging and unique this endeavor was. Truly. But what's inspiring is the renewed ambition we're seeing in space exploration. Tell me more. Both NASA and private entities like SpaceX. I love SpaceX. They're actively planning to return to the moon. It's happening. This time, the narrative is shifting. Oh, yeah. Towards a more sustained presence. Where, where? With the potential for establishing a permanent lunar base. Wow. A permanent lunar base. It really sparks the imagination, doesn't it? It does. To think that the next footprints on the moon might be part of a long-term mission. Yeah. With humans living and working on another celestial body. It's mind-blowing. And considering the advancements in diversity within science and technology. It's so important. It's entirely conceivable. Yeah. And perhaps even inevitable. I hope so. That the next person to walk on the moon won't be a man at all. But a woman ushering in a new chapter in our lunar story. I love it. This future of lunar exploration. Yeah. I mean, it raises so many fascinating questions. Like what? What new scientific discoveries await us? Right. What resources might we find? And how will we utilize them responsibly? Yeah. And how will establishing a more permanent presence on the moon reshape our understanding of our place in the universe. It's exciting to think about. It's an unfolding story. It is. All stemming from that one small step taken on a dusty gray world over half a century ago. Wow. And that's our deep dive into the captivating tale of The Man on the Moon. I loved it. A story brimming with ambition, courage, and a truly giant leap into the unknown. So good. If you enjoyed this journey through history and technology, yeah. make sure to subscribe to rdspc.net. Do it. For more in-depth explorations. Yes. Share this with someone who might find it interesting. Spread the word. Let's continue uncovering these remarkable stories together. Absolutely. Until our next deep dive. Keep looking up.